so hello everyone this is my second task of let's grow more internship and the name of the task was stock market prediction and forecasting using stack lstm so we have used this algorithm called long short top memory uh, which is a neural network uh, for the for the prediction of a stock market and for the forecasting of it so here i have said that in this project we are going to do univariate method of analysis well will use only the closed parameter of the data to predict the <coughs> next data so uh, there are there are various ways of analysis of your data uh, they are multivariate analysis univariate analysis in multivariate analysis what you have to do that you have to use more than one features for the uh, prediction but here we are using only one feature for the prediction so uh, at first i would like to explain that where you are going to use this rnn called recurrent neural network uh, for which is also called LSTM long sort of memory long sort of memory used RNN so uh, Talking about this algorithm this algorithm is a uh, this uh, neural network is a kind of neural network that It it remembers the previous inputs and according to that uh, some of the previous inputs it gives the next output So similarly in the in the stock market We are going to predict the next data on the basis of the previous previous working days data that's why this algorithm is uh, is suited in this in this project, and yeah, this project is also a time series series analysis, and we are going to use close price for, of <coughs> of the data. So at first first step is the importing of important library. So uh, there are the three basic libraries that I've imported. They are NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and here. Uh, NumPy is numerical Python. You can use NumPy for the uh, for the uh, making different type of mat matrices, make uh, and manipulation of matrix and generation generate different type of arrays and all those. And Panda is used for data frame or uh, we say the data uh, data manipulation. Like if you have the CSP data, you can manipulate it. You can drop the column. You can uh, uh, do anything with your data. And this matplotlib used for the plotting of your data. So at first I have uh, I have here uh, imported my data set and you can see uh, in the data set we have a lot of parameters a lot of attributes that are data open high price low price last and trade quantity and turnovers and these all are our stock market data which which are from NSC Tata Global Tata Global data and I have used the uh, you can also find data in this link or you can find this uh, data in Kaggle as well. So uh, let's I'm going to explore the data set. So at first uh, I have now here using this is not dot sum function in the data set. I have found that is there any data uh, is there any data which is is there which is null because because at first we have to do data preprocessing where we need to assure that our row should uh, any row should not be should not contain uh, should not contain null data if the row would contain null data it would be very hard for our algorithm to analyze that and that's why we'll do we'll take various kind of uh, steps if there are null data but here you can see there are no null data that's why we are uh, we are we do not need to go on next step so uh, you can see in this column uh, in this uh, box what I have did that uh, I have extracted this uh, I have sorted the value sorted the sorted the data I have sorted the data on the basis of date and what does this in place equals to true means it means that if you are doing this in place equals to true your data set is uh, automatically going to be modified if you are not going to use this in place equals to true your data will not be modified will not be modified it will be modified for temporary but when I use in place equals to true, it is modified. Uh, it is modified uh, immediately and ascending equals to because I want to put my date in ascending order. So you can see that my date is now uh, arranged in ascending order 17, 721, 722, 723. So uh, let's go down and uh, let's visualize the data. Uh, this is the visualization that I have done. I have uh, uh, plotted the new. Uh, new open on the basis of date and also new also this close on the basis of date this is the open prices on the basis of date this is the close prices on the basis of date date now uh, the fourth uh, step is feature scaling 
here uh, what is feature scaling it's it's uh, it's it's very important in data science or analytics because uh, sometimes you get the you get the data which you get the data row or data that are high in value like it's 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh and on the time of computation it will become it will it will become very, it will take so much time and so much space for your computation it increases your computational complexity uh, that's why what you need to do that you need to scale that data now here i have scaled uh, my data my data or in 0 0.021 it means that my close price is uh, scaled between 0 to 1 using this min max uh, here min max scalar i have used min max scalar and here you see the formula using this formula it's it's scaling is done so uh, every data in my value has lower lowest lowest to lowest value zero and highest value has one and here you can see all those uh, i have uh, received this data mm, and our data has 235 column and one one row here so 235 column and 235 rows and one column tf.save and here uh, this is this is the step where we have transformed our where we have transferred our data close close price to 0 to 1 and we have put this price to transform closed value and uh, now you are going to use the stack ls stack lstm and here uh, at first uh, before using stack lstm we have to split our data that's why uh, here in this script you can see that uh, we have found the length of our data frame and our training we are going to make the training length 60 percent that's why 60 percent we have uh, extracted the length of training data and we have extracted the uh, length of testing data that is uh, remaining that is 40 percent now uh, in this in this uh, script you can see that all the uh, uh, the length of the training data the length of the training data is uh, put on this training data all the data uh, sorry all the data up to this training data length are put on the training data and all the data is starting uh, starting from training data rate like uh, after ending this 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 was started training data length was started and this all data has been assigned into this testing data because 60 percent of data has gone into training data that is the length you can see here from here and now 40 percent are assigning testing data now you can see the length of the training and testing data that i have printed here that is 1221 814 and now uh, this is the very important part you need to understand this logic and what we are doing that uh, since we know that our our data set our data set should be like that because our data set should be like uh, uh, because in lstm model you are predicting new value on the basis of your previous value so on x what is your s your x is the your x is the previous values and your y is the next value after that previous for example you have one two three four five six and if you use the five things to uh, five data to predict six data then you have to do this here i have made this to to this uh, this to empty array and now uh, i put it all the 50 all the 50 uh, all the 50 data on x uh, all the here you can see that i have make data set length 50 because after 50 closing price the next 50 first closing price is predicted that's why using this function i am doing that We can clearly see that 50 data is used for the prediction of 51st data set. Now, uh, these all are the sizes that I am printing here, and at, at, we always need to receive our data in uh, data in three dimension uh, when we are working with LSTM model. Now you can see that I have used sequential class from the. Uh, sequential class uh, from the uh, TensorFlow uh, tensor Keras and now I have fed my data I have fed my uh, I have made my uh, object of the sequential class that is MDL that is my model 
and now now i have made my model with the uh, first layer with the size of 50 and the second third layer with the size of 50 as well and this is one my output layer now i am going to now i am going to feed my data into this model i have fit my data into this model and and this is these are the epochs where my training is done now you can see that uh, while the training uh, i have i have done 100 iteration and my loss value has dropped significantly and it came to 100 it means that our data has very good accuracy now uh, what we are doing that uh, this is the scalar dot inverse transform we have uh, scaled our data to 0 1 and this inverse transfer function uh, reverse your process of scaling and it creates your original data for our prediction and now we have used our used our data for the uh, comparison now here you can see that uh, as as we know that we have used 15 50 data to predict 51st data and if it is and we want to check if it is working right or not that's why we have written this code we have first created the same data set like uh, same data set like our closing data set in this empty life function what is the empty life function is to that is used to create a new array with the same shape with the same shape as that of df and that is uh, train pretty plot because i am creating this for my plotting and now <clears throat> because prediction started from 50 point uh, why start from 50 what yeah as i have said that on previous logic that our prediction has started from 50 50 point that's why uh, we are going to put 50 with this logic we are going to put 50 data on uh, on the plot and 51st data which is our prediction 51st data is our prediction so our prediction only start with 51st so uh, similarly for the testing data because our testing data is after testing data is after 60% uh, of data that's why we have used this logic you can analyze this logic and know more and now we have plotted this you see, you see in that uh, all the my prediction my prediction and the original data has aligned very uh, closely now for the forecasting i have used i have used this fun this function this function is very important for the forecasting because uh, what you want to do that uh, while uh, i want to forecast for the 30 days for uh, now you have to use last 50 data to forecast 51st data's 51st data and again recursively what you have to do that use that forecasted data as well for the prediction of 52nd data so uh, these function do that and this is uh, it might be rough but this is this is what the prediction this is what the, our prediction happened and for making it continuous we have used this inverse uh, we have used this uh, we have added our predicted data on our initial data set thank you i have uploaded it in my github and if you have come to last then please uh, give me a star in my github Thank you for this.